Good morning, afternoon, evening, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead outlook from Privateer FX. Um, I'm recording about an hour before the open, the CME open, the S&Ps, futures open uh, here in the United States. Uh, just looking at weekend Wall Street, um, looks like S&Ps will open about a half a percent lower. Um, really nothing wasn't a whole lot um, over the weekend that um, came out that should be um, that should be moving markets here on the open. Um, there was some positive news about some antiviral drugs showing early promise. Um, the FDA grants emergency use for Quidel, uh, Gilead's Remdesivir. You know that's that's another one that's been you know making all the headlines. Um, you know we had a historic non-farm payroll uh, losses of you know were just historic. Um, you know we're we're still expecting a, an unemployment rate somewhere around twenty to twenty-five percent before this is all said and done. Um, you know, that's a problem for Trump leading up to the election, um, you know, later in the year, which is a risk that was originally at the beginning of the year, I was, was saying the, probably the biggest risk this year is political. And now the coronavirus obviously took center stage. Um, I'm just scrolling through some of the headlines. That that's pretty much it. it. Um, one thing that I did notice that that has moved is Bitcoin over the weekend. And here, let me see. If, uh, let me pull it up here. You can see Bitcoin. Let's use this Bitstamp one. We've had a little bit of a bounce off the lows, but at one point it got down to 81, um, close to 8,100, which I think the 200 day, I'm looking at another charting service now. My 200 day comes in around 8,500, but you know, it depends on the charting service. But anyhow, you know, that, that's, a, that's a little bit of a risk off. And market got pretty excited about Paul Tudor Jones saying how he's adding Bitcoin to his portfolio. My guess is he had been buying it for the past two months and needed liquidity to sell into, and he got that in uh, in this big update. This was the May seventh was the day that he announced it, I believe. And uh, I don't know the volume up here, but I would imagine there was massive amounts of um, volume that day, which allowed him to offload some of his. Bitcoin longs, and he's probably stepping in and buying it now uh, in the sell-off. Again, a uh, you know, decent volume day. So that's Bitcoin. But let's get to um, let's get to currencies because there's some interesting charts here. Um, here is dollar max. So you know, equities continue to grind higher. Grind higher. <clears throat> we have now um, on Friday we closed pretty. Much Closed on the highs of the day. We closed back at this Fibo, and it's the highest, um, well, second highest daily close of this whole bounce from the March 23rd lows. And you know, it looks like it probably wants to go test the 200-day moving average. But we are getting into um, this week. There are some. There is potential for this to top out, and maybe it, maybe it is closer. I'm, I'm hoping it's closer to the 200-day moving average. So I'm expecting further gains for a few more days before you can get a bit of a correction. Why don't we just get the S&Ps here? Let's start with the S&Ps first. You can see the highest close that we had was up here at 29, and this is a CFD. So let's, let's do the let's do the mini. 
easier to see. Um, the highest daily close for this whole move is 29.41, and we closed at 29.28 and a half on Friday. So the 200 day comes in right around 3,000, and that's an area that I'd like to fade, and then be looking to pick some back up against this 26, 2700, 2750 area first. You know, and maybe, uh, you know, maybe we can even get a dip down to, let's just run a, a fib where, let's say we get up to 3,000 this week, which seems very likely. It's only 70 points higher than Friday's close, so why not? Um, and then let's say we pause and we want to dip down and let's say we retrace a third of the move, which would be a, a good size retracement, 2686. It would be a good, good spot for it to um, correct to. And uh, sorry, it's my daughter saying we need to get my wife something for Mother's Day. Oh, happy Mother's Day to any mothers out there that watch this video. It's Mother's Day in the U.S. Gloomy day, unfortunately. Um, raining, gray, kind of typical spring. Anyhow, back to this. So 2690, we could say, would be a good good spot for this to pull back, maybe, maybe down into 2635. But, you know, we'll watch this. We're watching price closely. I'm waiting for a reversal day. I'm waiting for kind of a test of the 200 day. Um, when we pull up NQ, it's been leading the, leading the pack, the equity higher. And if we want to do FIB from all-time highs, which was back in... Back up here, 9760 area. You can see we've already taken out the 76.8% FIB. So this, I don't see why not. It's only another 500 points. Why not go make a new high before before a pullback? Um, maybe it doesn't get up there. I'd like to see maybe a double top or maybe a lower high for a correction. Um, you got to keep in mind. I mean. Obviously, the economy, global economy, is horrible in horrible shape, but we have to keep in mind the amount of stimulus that the Fed has done is like nothing the market's ever seen. So trying to handicap the direction in equities and you know markets in general, currencies, commodities, is very difficult because there's no precedent. I've never seen anything like this. It's maybe you go back to World War II. Um, you know, we had massive fiscal and infrastructure spend. So, you know, I think that we could see all-time highs, higher highs in equities um, over the next couple months. You know, with some pullbacks, um, potentially a retest in autumn of the lows, back to March lows, maybe new lows. That would be a pandemic uh, resurgence. You know, a lot of the states here are starting to slowly open up, not my, not my state. We're, we'll be lucky to have things back to any sort of normalcy by July 1st. And, you know, there's talk of, there's talk of June 1, my guess is the governor pushes that out another month, which is going to be devastating for an already broken state that surely is going to have to default on all their debt. And yes, you know the state I'm talking about, Illinois. It's an awful, horribly run, horribly run state. Just kind of embarrassing. But we will not have to live here forever, so that's good news. Um, let's take a look at gold. Uh, um, just kind of sideways. You know, everyone's bowled up. You know, there's been massive 
demand for the physical and the futures just aren't really going anywhere. Um, we haven't even made a new high, um, in the, you know, over the past couple of weeks. So for me, the pain is probably lower. Take a look at it weekly. It's gone nowhere since the high. Um, eventually we will be over 1800. We'll be over 2000, but, um, it just seems sideways. Silver, we like silver better. It acts better. Um, the gold silver ratio has taken a turn lower. Um, we think this bodes well. We think all the stimulus, all the Fed's actions are going to be super bullish for metals in general. <clears throat> uh, gold is just the one that seems to be, there's a lot of ownership of gold and you'll see futures puke. And they could puke with stocks going up. And I think they would puke even faster if stocks correct lower. Uh, here's copper. Copper looks pretty sexy. Broken some of these recent highs. Um, you know, we're in a little bit of a channel, an up channel here. And this looks pretty strong. And this is a reflation story. Um, here's the VIX. The VIX is the lowest close we've seen in a really long time going back to you know or even below the low that we saw am I gonna move this would be back in uh, we're back to early March levels um, do I think we're gonna get back down into here in the teens no well, we'll stay elevated but you know can we get back down Maybe, I don't know, I guess we could fill a gap down to 18 to 20. Um, I do think people will start trying to pick up protection again. You know, now it's much easier, um, much cheaper to buy protection. Dollar Max is an interesting daily chart. Again, you know, if we want to reflate this global economy, the one thing we need is a weaker dollar. And we will get that eventually. Um, Dollar Max is kind of a risk on type play. It, you know, it's a weaker dollar. It's a stronger emerging market, even though all the news I read about Mexico and Brazil and South America, um, the way that they've handled the coronavirus has been just piss poor and they're going to pay the price. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be careful owning things like Mexican peso or Brazilian real, um, in the face of the, the cases, the death counts, and everything rising dramatically um, over the next couple of months because they just didn't lock down soon enough. They didn't treat it um, like it was a, you know going to impact them at all, and they're going to pay the price dearly for that. Um, but anyhow, technically, at least in the short term, this has had a nice breakdown, and we're going to play it. We're playing it short dollar max, um, you know, a test of 23 looks likely it's not too far away and, you know, maybe a pullback to 22, 22, 50. And even this week, you know, if you get equities continuing to grind, grind higher, you'll see markets like dollar max go down. Uh, okay. So there's dollar max dollar yen, uh, you know, we had golden week. In Japan so it was very heavy the early part of last week and then until it wasn't and you can tell right here they were protecting this 106 level aggressively and then my guess is that some of the authorities in Japan GPIF and the like uh, came in and bought it and bought it pretty aggressively off these lows uh, now it didn't bounce that much it got up to 10680 um, so we're kind of a no man's land there, you know, retrace some of last week's losses. Let's go to cable. What's cable doing? Not much of anything. Um, you know, we, we do like the dollar lower, so that could bode well for cable. Um, the UK government um, came out, uh, Johnson came out over the weekend saying that they're starting to ease the coronavirus lockdown restrictions. 
I read about that on Forex Live. Um, so they're they're opening things up. They're opening like parks up. You you know, unlimited amounts of outdoor exercise. Walk your dog. Go for a jog. Go for a bike ride. Play sport, but you can only play sport with your immediate family. Um, but it's a, you know it's a step in uh, you know it's gonna it's gonna help the overall psyche in the UK by just being able to get outside, and you know that's something we're missing here in in my state. Um, not to say that we're not outside, but um, it's frowned upon, and everyone's wearing face masks and. Um, Dollar cat closed down near the lows. Uh, this is another one where we had, <coughs> excuse me, Corona cough that I've had for two months. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna get tested um, just to see if I've had it because I feel like I probably did. Um, you know, I spent two weeks in in London on the two in early February before they shut everything down, and uh, you know, I probably took the two two ten times a day surrounded by people and I've had a cough on and off for since then so we're coming up on all Feb, March, April into May now um, I'm just curious to see if I've had it I don't think they can do anything about it but it'll at least make me feel better um, a huge technical level here in dollar CAD comes in at 138.58, call it 138.50. You can see we kind of had that false break here. We closed up, everything was looking pretty sexy for dollar CAD, and then it rolled over. We had a big bearish engulfing day on uh, Thursday, and this was Friday's bar, so some fall through. So this to me, there's gonna be some stops, any, any of these stale longs. Um, this will be a pretty powerful point, and we'll see if we can get uh, you know, get a move down closer to 137. Um, Euro just kind of holding an uptrend line. Um, decent line, three touches now. Looks pretty important for the week ahead. Call 107.70 ish, 107.80. Um, you know, Europe's a disaster, so I don't know. I don't have a strong opinion on which direction. I'm not really trying not to play it. Uh, you know, EuroCAD, back to our CAD theme. Um, looks like we could take out this low here at 150.50. We got a couple. You know, we had a nice bounce, nice bullish engulfing day, and then some fall through, and then rolled over. And then let's go to Aussie and Kiwi, and then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, Aussie, we need to take out this 65-70 area. Um, but we do think we can see 66.5, 67, and Kiwi's acting very similar. You know, we got to take out that, that late April high. If we take out these highs, then I, I think we can continue to trade higher. Um, the open here, it looks like the euro's down at 0.1%. Um, cable's unchanged. Kiwi's up 0.1%. Dollar CAD's kind of unchanged. So, not, nothing, no, no major moves. Again, the market opens in about 55 minutes. Probably get some, some moves uh, there uh, on the open, when the equity's open. All right. Leave it at that. You'll hear from us on the um, European Open. Hopefully, from a my not a non hungover partner. Um, Switzerland opened up a bit and sounded like they had a jolly old time on, on Thursday night and pay, was paying the price for it on, uh, on Friday. Anyhow, stay safe. I hate having to say that, but I uh, hope everyone's well. Had a nice weekend. But the mothers had a nice Mother Day, Mother's Day. That's where I'm going now to pick up some flowers and start making dinner. So good luck and have a great week ahead. Cheers.